Babylon is, is, the, is the land that Cain first uh, occupied. And the earliest inscriptions we find there show uh, somebody receiving power uh, from uh, a heavenly body, and the shape of that heavenly body is a, is a cuneiform uh, inscription. It's actually an eight-rayed cross, like the double cross. Right. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's called uh, Anu. Anu means the god of heaven. He was the great sky god of the Babylonians.
the Society of Jesus or Jesuits uh, used not only the Jesuits but also the the Order of the Masons. Uh, the Masonic Lodge is a similar organization to the Jesuits. It's an absolute uh, totalitarian hierarchy, uh, and everyone uh, in the various degrees of Masonry uh, obeys a higher power. And it cult that uh, Masonic power culminates in what is known as the Unknown Superior. Nobody knows his name. All they know is that uh, they get orders from him. And uh, those orders are, I guess, delivered with some sort of code so that everybody knows that it came from the Unknown Superior. And I maintain that the Unknown Superior during the American Revolution was none other than Lorenzo Ritchie. So, the Masonic Lodge was a wonderful way for Catholic militants to control the operations of Protestants because Catholics were forbidden to join the Masonic Orders and Protestants knew that. They knew that the, uh, they, they, they apprehended that to become a Freemason was to uh, belong to a brotherhood that, that discriminated against Catholics. Catholics were definitely a despised minority in America, mainly because uh, Protestants knew that if a Catholic would hold political office, uh, he would have to be obedient to uh, a foreign sovereign who is the, uh, the Pope. And uh, this is this is true. Uh, this is found in Catholic uh, ecclesiastical law that uh, if, if, if you're a member of the Catholic Church and hold political power, uh, you are to use it to advance uh, the rights and honors and dignities of the papacy. As, as the, uh, another thing that the Jesuits did, and I found very interesting, and I, I haven't seen many uh, writers on the subject discuss, but the very first publication of Sun Tzu's Art of War, in a Western language, was published by the Jesuits. The translator was the Jesuit um, astronomer to the court of the Chinese emperor. And... Uh, by the way, Jesuits have uh, they have high positions in just about every profession throughout the world. Uh, they are no slouches. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. The beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? who was able to make war with him. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. 
and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. John the Baptist and Paul lose their lives. They were beheaded. Now, if you are on the side of Jesus, that is a horrifying thing to have happened to them. If you are on the side of Lucifer, then that is your signal of victory over your enemy. So by taking the name John as an occultist, you're actually saying, I'm celebrating the destruction of the followers of Jesus Christ and of Jesus Christ himself. O ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem, and blow the trumpet in Tekoa, and set up a sign of fire in beth for evil appeareth out of the north, and great destruction. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. The shepherds with their flocks shall come unto her. They shall pitch their tents against her round about, they shall feed everyone in his place. Prepare ye war against her. Arise, and let us go up at noon. Woe unto us, for the day goeth away, for the shadows of the evening are stretched out. Arise, and let us go by night, and let us destroy her palaces. For thus hath the Lord of hosts said, Hew ye down trees, and cast a mount against Jerusalem. This is the city to be visited. She is holy oppression in the midst of her. As a fountain casteth out her waters, so she casteth out her wickedness. Violence and spoil is heard in her. Before me continually is grief 
and wounds. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee, lest I make thee desolate, a land not inhabited. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine, turn back thine hand as a grape-gatherer into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others, with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore hear, ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba, and the sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friend shall perish. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a people cometh from the north country, and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. They shall lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea, and they ride upon horses set in array as men for war against thee, O daughter of Zion. We have heard the fame thereof. Our hands wax feeble, anguish hath taken hold of us, and pain as of a woman in travail. Go not forth into the field, nor walk by the way, for the sword of the enemy and fear is on every side. O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth and wallow thyself in ashes. Make thee mourning as for an only son, most bitter lamentation, for the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people, that thou mayest know and try their way. They are all grievous revolters, walking with slanders. They are brass and iron. They are all corrupters. The bellows are burned. The lead is consumed of the fire. The founder melteth in vain, for the wicked are not plucked away. Reprobate silver shall men call them, because the Lord hath rejected them.
Well, you see, that, here's, the, here's the thing. It wasn't enough for me just to expose them. I started to stop. That's why it took me 10 years to write the book. Okay. Because, because I, I, you should see some of the early drafts of, these, of this book. As I made these discoveries, I was ranting. I was jumping up and down, and my fists were pounding on the table. I mean, you, there were exclamation points about every other sentence. You know, can you believe this? You know? <laughs> and, but the more drafts I did, the more I reflected and digested what's really going on, that these people really do have the right to be there. Hey, I'm glad evil people are ruling the evildoers around me. Because if good people were, the evildoers would just run all over them. Right. So I need, you know, it takes a thief to catch a thief. <laughs> it, it takes a real wicked person to rule wicked people. And so I'm, you know, I hate to call our, 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 polit our politicians, you know, wicked or evil people, but I'm sorry, you know, I, <laughs> uh, that's... I, I'm not a court of law, and I'm certainly not going to uh, sentence them to any, uh, you know, any fine or punishment or anything like that. This is simply a conclusion that I've made based on their fruits. Huh. And, and you know, and I'll tell you what, it, it's kind of a progression just in talking with you. Uh, from learning uh, what the evil do or who they are and going through a you have to go through a, a rigorous uh, basically taking yourself through a history lesson again but but one that's not presented to you you have to uncover it because they hide it uh, and once you get to the point of figuring out what who they are then you got to figure out what to do against them that's and I think it, Greg that's so important yeah it, it does no good to know who they are yeah you, you have to let who they are uh, determine a plan of action and you've got to be sure that your plan of action uh, will not be offensive you know? uh, and what happens if all of a sudden we have all these good people out there who understand this you know something it looks like to me it's kind of like they dry up a little bit their power weakens uh, you're absolutely right hey you know what the, the fields are ripe for harvest because guess where so much of the, of the evil is Yes, get Go ahead. ready. So much of the evil is in the Protestant churches.
the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with a point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills, O oh, my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil, and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabit it. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be fearful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days and at his end shall be a fool. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living water. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee, neither have I desired the woeful day. Thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before thee. Be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. Let them be confounded that persecute me, but let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed, but let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil, and destroy them with double destruction. Thus said the Lord unto me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, whereby the kings of Judah come in, and by the which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem, and say unto them, Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye kings of Judah, and all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter in by these gates. Thus saith the Lord, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day, neither do ye any work, but hallow ye the Sabbath day, as I commanded your fathers. But they obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, but made their neck stiff, that they might not hear, nor receive instruction. And it shall come to pass, if ye diligently hearken unto me, saith the Lord, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but hallow the Sabbath day, to do no work therein. Then shall there enter into the gates of this city kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. And they shall come from the cities of Judah and from the places about Jerusalem and from the land of Benjamin and from the plains and from the mountains and from the south 
offerings, burnt offerings, and sacrifices, and meat offerings, and incense, and bringing sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord. But if ye will not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath day, and not to bear a burden, even entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched.